Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winolington. Today we're going to be taking a look at Service Bus again. We're going to be looking at Service Bus Explorer forwarders and filters. Hi guys, today I want to take another look at Service Bus. Last time we looked at Service Bus, we just looked at kind of the most bare bones kinds of things you can do with topics and cues. Today I want to build on that a little bit and talk about how you can set up forwarders and filtering so that you can shape message delivery and things like that. And I also want to look at a utility that's very useful for administering and setting up Service Bus called Service Bus Explorer. So the first thing I want to look at is Service Bus Explorer. And this is a project that is written in .NET for Windows. So you can use it on a Windows box, but it won't work in a Mac and Linux, but if you can make it work in a Windows context, you can download this and administer most aspects of Service Bus using this utility. It'll let you set up things like filters and forwarders and queues and topics, subscriptions, send and receive messages and do all that kind of fun stuff with it. So to get it, just go out here to Google and Google Service Bus Explorer. You'll get a link to this repository and give it all. So we'll link it in the video description below. And then you can click on releases and then you can download this particular link right here, whatever the latest version is, uh, 5.0.4 is the latest. And then uh, just download that and uh, it will give you the bundle. Now inside the bundle is an unsigned application. So it's going to have all of the actual DLLs and things like that with it. So what you can do is then take that into a new folder. You can just create a new folder, SB Explorer. And... Um, I can spell and uh, paste all those files into the folder. And this will generate uh, a list, obviously, and, and explore. And once you have that, you can just launch it using service bus explorer.exe right here. Now, you might get a Windows protection uh, error right here. Just click on more options and hit run anyway. There's, this is fine. You, if, you're, if you're suspicious, you can build the code yourself. But in any case, this is the UI. So this is what we're going to be working with. Okay, once you have it up and running, the next thing to do would be to get a connection string for it. The easiest way to connect to this is to go over to the Azure portal. And then there you can go to shared access policies for your service bus namespace. And under that, you will have a root manager shared access key. This is one that is set up by default whenever you create the resource. And it's gonna generate two keys, a primary and a secondary, but you wanna grab a connection string from the primary or secondary, either one will work and simply just click copy and that will copy it to your memory and um, come over here to service specs explore and go to connect and you can populate all this stuff if you want to the easiest way is just to select inner connection string right here paste in the connection string and click ok and that will then link up this particular instance to your instance of service bus so I have a couple of things here. I have queues and topics, and these are uh, what I am going to be working with today in my demos. But I first wanna talk about this tool and show you some of its features to show you how you can use it for debugging your topics and queues on Service Bus. Now, Service Bus Explorer allows you to do all kinds of things with queues and topics. I'm just gonna show you some of the, the cool things you can do with it. It's pretty straightforward. One of the cool things you can do with it is obviously you know, administer the Service Bus. And I can create a queue, for instance. So if I just create something called Blaze um, Queue uh, and just set this up, I can take the defaults. You can uh, set up other issue uh, options like this, auto delete on idle, like uh, just purging messages, max delivery count one or ten or however many you want to. You can set up forwarders, which we'll look at. We'll look at these in a moment, and you can also uh, set up other things on the messages themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this queue and it's just going to use the, the administration API to create the queue. And uh, once I have the queue curated, I can also create listeners on this. So I can come over here and create queue listener and you could do this exact same thing for a topic subscription as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start this. And this is gonna start listening for uh, messages coming into this guy. So I'm just gonna look for um, messages and to, but i can send them as well right here by clicking on send messages so i'm going to bring the uh the listener up right here just to have it kind of in the background there so i can kind of see what happens and if i wanted to send a message i just have my message right here now i have different properties i can set on this and these are 
properties on the message that you can set. And then these can also be used for filtering, which we're going to talk about in a moment, but I'm just concerned about sending a message right now. So I'm just going to hit start and we should be able to see the message come in on the listener. So this allows me to set up, you know, subscribers and uh, senders right here in the context of Service Bus Explorer. So that's very useful for just testing out your cues and topics, uh, whichever they may be. The next thing I wanna talk about is setting up forwarders. Now, forwarders are a nice feature for taking messages off of cues and sending them to topics or taking messages off of topics and sending, sending them to cues. And this allows you to set up kind of routes within the context of your Service Bus. So if a message comes in on a queue, you can forward it to a topic, then you can split it out into subscriptions. And then from there, you can uh, forward subscriptions onto other subscriptions, uh, rather topics, and then forward those onto other queues if you want to. So it allows you to move things around in your service bus by chaining queues and topics together in a way that allows messages to flow through to different endpoints in your system. So for mine right here, what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to attach this, my queue to this, my topic right here. And to do that, it's very easy to do. You just click on this right here and you just choose where you want to send it. I'm going to click on my topic. And now this is going to forward messages to my topic right here. So this will take any message that's sent to my queue and then it will forward it down to my topic. And then by doing that, the my topic, the topic will get it and it will send it to all of these subscriptions right here. Another cool thing you can do with topics and subscriptions is create filters. The subscription filter will allow me to filter out messages that I don't want to come onto my given subscription. And you can do this by looking at the properties of the message and you can match criteria and, and then that will allow a message through onto a given subscription. This is pretty easy to do within the context of any given subscription. So if I right click over here and click add rule, um, what it's going to allow me to do is you know, create a new rule. And the filters are a way of filtering out those messages. So basically what you use is kind of like a SQLite syntax to basically filter out things using uh, like what you would have in the where clause of a SQL uh, expression. So if I did um, sys.2, which is the to field in a message, and I said equals sub one, that means I want messages that match this criterion to come onto this given subscription. And that is the filter I want to add. Now, uh, the actions over here are the, the ability to create various kinds of, of massagings that you might want to apply to the actual message. So if you want to change some of the properties in it, for instance, you can do these kinds of actions on it to actually update properties, recalculate fields, do things like that based on things in the message. I'm not going to get into that today, but I do want to talk about this filter uh, right here because it's a very powerful feature, especially when you're working with subscriptions on topics. So I'm going to go ahead and add a rule right here for each one of these. And I'm going to call this one uh, just a filter based on the two field and for each of these messages uh, types, essentially what I'm doing here is just adding a rule that is going to be looking at the two field and each one of these will then have a different two field uh, value. So I have sub one, sub two and sub three. So it basically matches the name of the, the topic subscription. So if something is bound for sub, sub one, it will allow it onto this subscription because of this filter uh, right here. And then sub three, obviously for sub three and then sub two for sub two. So that filter allows me to just basically send any message to that topic. And unless the filter allows it through, it's not going to end up on the subscription. So if all works well, what I could do is send a message through the queue right here. And because it's forwarded, it will go from the queue onto the topic. And then if the to field is set, it could end up in any one of these subscriptions. So we can do that with a simple test. So I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to send a message again. And uh, what I want to do with this message is I'm going to have a two property and I'm going to say, I'm going to send it to sub uh, one. And now with that, because it's forwarded, I would expect this to end up on sub one with that filter. So the message was sent. So let's see if it ended up on this particular uh, subscription here. So let's refresh this. 
um, hitting at five. And I do see a message there, right there. So I do know that it ended up on that given subscription. So let's go look at some code now and let's see how this is implemented in code to see just how it behaves now that I have a forwarder set up and I have a couple of filters set up using Service Bus Explorer. Now this is a Node.js app that I used last time and I have done really nothing to modify this other than to add in a to field into the message. So basically just calculating who this is going to be to. So basically taking the value of X, doing a modulus on it, adding one. So it'd be sub one, two or three, and then adding a two field to the message object right here. And then that's what I'm going to be filtering on because this forwards to the topic. What this is going to do is just receive it on the queue and then it's going to forward it over the, to the topic. Now the topic will then take it and send it to the subscriptions, which we set up already with filters. And so the subscriptions are then going to be using this code. Now this code basically just prompts me to enter in the name of the subscription and it sets that up. So my expectation is, is that for every uh, third message that gets published to the queue, it will send, be sent to the, the topic and then the subscription will get every other third message. So let's go ahead and start these right here. We, it will kind of like a round robin uh, type process. But if I start this right here, uh, index.js, this is just going to tell me to enter my subscription name and I'm going to type in sub one, which is already created. Let's start a new instance of this. And this one is going to be sub two. In this case, node index.js sub two and uh, type in sub two. Uh, I should have added just a parameterized version of this, but I, I just was doing it after it started. But in any case, this will get the job done. Node index.js and call this one sub three. So now I have three subscribers that are listening on the three different subscriptions. There's sub two and um, let's see where sub one is right here. Okay, so we can see that those are subscribing to the various topics that we uh, have seen already. So let's get these kind of in a cascading uh, look right here. So we can kind of see the messages coming down the side there. And let's go ahead and start up a new instance of this one. And um, let's bring it over and let's bring our subscriptions kind of to the front here so that we can see stuff happen. And um, that way uh, we can see the messages come in as we start this particular uh, app right here. So let's go over here and type in node index.js. And this one will start sending messages to the queue, which go to the topic. Topic sends it to the subscriptions and these are filtered. So let's see what happens. And now we're kind of seeing in a round robin fashion as this one sends a message, each one of these gets every other third message. And that's kind of what we expected it to. So that's the way that filtering is gonna work on our uh, subscriptions. And this is also using a forwarder and that's all brokered by the service bus. So using some of the administration APIs, this is some cool features that will allow you to set up more complex plumbing in the context of your service bus. And will also let you uh, filter out and branch messages and do all kinds of cool stuff within that context. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.